Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. It is Francesco here. So in this video today we are chatting things I loved about Things 3. Now I didn't want to actually include it as that title so it might be slightly different but I'm going to chat through some of the things that I loved about Things 3. Stop saying that. <laughs> So in today's video, I'm gonna run over the features that I particularly loved, as well as sort of the micro experiences inside of Things 3 that really did draw me in, as well as what kept me there to some extent. Um, and things that I sort of compared in my head against Todoist. So I'll be showing you my screen in a second, and we'll be running through some of those features. So of course, if you guys don't know, I have been using, what well, I used Things 3 for the last three months, and I'm back with Todoist now, which I did a full video on, but as you can imagine, uh, I definitely moved there for something. I wanted a good project experience, so I, I definitely saw Things 3 as a way to fix that. With the deadline function, as well as the completion function, I was almost there because it had those functions. Now, like Ivo mentioned in the comment on the Todoist, back, back with Todoist video, he said you were at Todoist because of the timing experience, and he's 100% right. That is the reason I'm back, and that's the thing, that's the biggest flaw that I think Things 3 didn't have for me. So let's start out with some of the features and experiences inside of Things 3. So Mac and iOS, obviously I don't recommend that you'd go for specifically one platform, because if you get an Android device, you're not gonna be there. But the Mac and iOS experience on Things 3 was fantastic. Although I didn't recommend it, as I said, it is something that I was very happy with, because I have a Mac, and an iOS device, so it tend to work great. Now the design was some of the, one of the things that I adored inside of Things 3. The sort of clear design, as well as the focus on like just removing anything unnecessary was really attractive to me, and I found the experience super easy to use. Now that's something that I don't think a lot of the bigger applications like to do or OmniFocus sort of advocate, and, Omni, and um, Things 3 actually delivers on that, a really beautiful design, making it easy to use, which is fantastic. Now the one thing I particularly enjoyed in the iOS experience, as well as the Mac one to some extent, is the gestures, and being able to quickly add something to your inbox just by dragging your thumb over, or even being able to add it to your timeline, not timeline, sorry, your task list, just made it so gorgeous to use. It was one of the best experience, best experiences I've used in terms of gestures. Now, when I actually got back on Todoist, I started like dragging my thumb over in the attempt to try that, um, and of course, at no prevail, uh, because they don't have the gestures experience, and it's some of the things that I wish Todoist would bring in, because it would make their iOS application so much easier to experience and use on a daily basis. One of the final notes on the gestures is when you are able to multi-select stuff, you just sort of tap, 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 and bring it along and multi-select it and make a multiple action on it. What I particularly liked about the iOS experience is it almost at some point was like using a desktop experience because they condensed the experience in a way that didn't make it intrusive but made it really easy to use. Now moving on to another feature, this evening tab was a brilliant function. Uh, I find myself, for example, during the day getting all of my workday stuff done and then I have a few things for the evening. Whether they're social stuff or actual work stuff, there wasn't really a way that I could separate that in Todoist, and of course Things 3 delivered that with something called This Evening. It separates it from today, but gives you this different section to plan up stuff there. So for example, if me and Becca had some work stuff to do, or even like a house based stuff or something like that, we could easily add that to the This Evening area and be able to have more context, or even like when I'm going shopping on the way home, to have that in This Evening makes it just and separates it from the work. You don't want to see like, well, especially for me, like I use personal and professional together, and I see like five really awesome work tasks and then one shopping list. And I'm like, what? why are you there? So moving on to calendar. Calendar events, uh, you have the ability inside of Things 3 to add calendar events to the top of today as well as upcoming. This was one of the features that I didn't enjoy when I started, but I loved by the end of it. It's a really intuitive feature, especially if you're looking to remind yourself of meetings and you don't necessarily want to add them to your calendar, um, sorry, to your task list. Now, of course, uh, that can be too intrusive, like maybe some people don't want a fixed tab at the top, 
to ruin that sort of thing through experience and that's probably what my first go-to was but I really enjoyed the calendar function and I wish there's something to do as tad as a fixed option but then there's an optional option too. So the next thing is the Windows experience and this is not the platform Windows, Windows. So in Things 3 you can create multiple tabs on Windows. Now this was great particularly when it came to planning. So for example I've dumped loads of stuff in my inbox and then drag it over to my upcoming to plot in items and then I would do the same with today and I could reshuffle my week fairly fast. Now I do this on a Thursday, like Thursday is my day where I pretty much coordinate my week ahead and it just gives me a bit of time to sort of get ready for that week ahead in advance. And what I tend to do and what I did with Things 3 is plot that all out using the upcoming tab and having the inbox tab and today tab open. So I had like multiple things and the great thing is you can drag them across to those things and it doesn't damage the experience. And that's available on Mac and I highly recommend that inside of the experience. Now projects um, was sort of a kind of anti-climax. I used projects for a while, but then I felt after a couple of days that I actually didn't need projects. Projects ha are, were pretty amazing inside of Things 3. You have the deadline abilities as well as a whole host of date functions, due date functions, and it looked great on that left-hand side, especially for the wedding. Like we were plotting out tasks inside of there, uh, particularly just because it had that deadline function as well as headers like you could create headers inside there but that's nothing you can't do inside a Todoist. So it was sort of like an anti-climax in the end. I came there for projects and didn't really find much value. Now subtasks was particularly something I really enjoyed. Um, of course notes I was talking about was a bit of a sort of confusion about notes but subtasks was great uh, and I really do applaud that experience. Uh, it was a lot less uh, clunkier than Todoist and it just was so much easier to input them as well. So if you want a, a visual overview as well or something to take away of all of those features that I loved, I did a Medium post, so I'll include that one in the description below and it has all of those nine or eight features that I enjoyed about Things 3. So talking about the non-features sort of experience, um, sort of the inbox, um, that was one of the features that really bugged me. So for example, when I want to add a new task to the to, to the bottom of my inbox because that's tend to be where I process. So I start from the top and finish at the bottom and slowly work through because the top indicates the dates that you added the furthest away and the newest date should be at the bottom. But it was the opposite. Whenever I added something to my inbox or a note, it would go to the top and I'd be like, I want this at the bottom because I want to slowly process it down because that's chronologically how I did it. Again, I had a lot of chronological functions inside of Things 3 that I didn't particularly like. So it's something that I was aware of from the beginning. The other thing as well is the Anytime tab. I really didn't use this that much. Uh, of course I used Sunday maybe or Sunday folder a little bit, but the Anytime I really couldn't get my head around. Uh, of course I could have Googled it and learned it, but I really didn't see any need and I wish there was an ability to hide it. Um, if there was, let me know in the comments below, but I'm pretty sure I couldn't find it. So in Things 3.4, which was released during my experience, they added something called areas, and the, not areas, they actually had that before, but the ability to pull your projects into areas in a neat format. And this was a game changer because projects were really messy along that left-hand side, and that was one of the biggest requests from users to make it so much neater, and they did, and it looked a lot better. The only other sort of pain point that I had during my experience was that when I was doing planning and that Windows layout, sort of bringing the windows there, I had occasional crashes, and I think that's because having lots of the experience multiplied or duplicated across the screen can be very testing on the application, especially when it's having to communicate with all of those windows. So again, I don't recommend having more than two windows open in the Things for Experience, and I definitely hone that in by the end of the month. So some of the stuff I underutilized, the natural language input, um, of course I learned this inside of Todoist, I'm not really learning it, it's like tomorrow at 2 p.m. or Tom at 2 p.m. Uh, and it comes up, but this was available in Things 3, and it's something I totally didn't bother taking the time out to learn. Again, I would say to some extent the, the same with the Anytime tab and also Someday, because I could have learned that and I could have made my experience so much better because I could have formatted and utilized those extra folders. Some of the small things that I really enjoyed is the progress pie bars. When you're working on a project, these pie bars come up and you basically have to see indicating how far you've got with your project or whether it's been completed. And that was a really nice addition. And I would say iconography was well above Todoist in this experience. I know Todoist, I'm working on iconography right now, so it probably will change, 
but the experience was so good in terms of making it easy to use and just beautiful. So as I come back to it, gestures were a real game changer in experience. Again, a very small thing, but everything just sort of shone in the iOS application particularly. And also, whenever you entered a new day in Things 3, I really liked the way that it said you have new, you have three new to-dos in a yellow sort of box, and it just made it beautiful. So, as you can imagine, Thing 3 was a uh, good le learning lessons for me. I'm going to, my next video will be about to do a setup. So you'll see my sort of changes in terms of making things minimal to some extent. And also, um, I don't not endorse Thing 3. I actually endorse it. I would say it's a really strong application, especially if you're looking for a, a personal sort of advanced application that helps you to organize your tasks uh, and you stick to sort of only being able to share with yourself. As I said, I never used to do this really to share tasks. So this was why I wanted to use things through because I knew that it didn't have that function and it, and it actually excels without that function. So the only other thing I want to mention is if you're looking at the things through experience, it is expensive. If you're looking at iOS and Mac, uh, I think it's like $65 collectively. I'll include the pricing below, um, but it's quite an expensive outlet. Like if you want to set yourself up on it uh, for a day or and you want to trial it, it's quite expensive. So I would recommend reading as much as you can around it. Read the reviews, I'll include my reviews as well as other people's reviews below. And we're looking to do a review on the Keep Productive YouTube channel, uh, sorry, the keepproductive.com website <laughs> that allows you to go into further detail on things. Anyway guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments below how you're using Things 3 or Todoist, it'd be great to hear. Um, I will be back with a Todoist setup video, uh, so feel free to uh, comment below or leave any remarks for me there. Anyway guys, thank you so much for stopping by today. Make sure to have a great week, keep productive, and I'll see you guys very, very soon.